What if zero, literally nothing, meets the imaginary unit i? You'd think nothing would come out of this mathematical encounter, but there's more to the story. Today we'll be diving into the unexpected world of zero to the i, and it's going to challenge some things you thought you knew about numbers. Traditionally, we think any power of zero is zero. And while that's often true for the equation zero to the x, this is really only true for real values of x larger than zero. If x equals zero, it's traditionally undefined, unless you're someone like me who thinks that this is one. And if x is less than zero, it's definitely undefined. Well, of course, unless you're talking about wheel algebra. And you can probably guess that sticking x equals i in here isn't going to be as simple as we originally thought. So instead of trying to tackle this problem directly, let's tackle this one, and maybe we'll have some more luck. Typically with exponentials like this, we use the complex logarithm and its properties. Disclaimer here, this function is not unique, it's multi-valued, but we'll keep going using the principal argument. Insert an e to the ln, and drop down the i using that good old property of exponents. Now here we're going to break out Euler's formula. e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. And in this case, theta is natural log x. So we have x to the i is cosine natural log x plus i sine natural log x. And if x equals zero, this is definitely undefined. Even for the complex logarithm, natural log of zero is undefined. Yet, even if things like this are undefined, we can try to figure out what they should be by getting close and using limits. We want to approach zero here and try to figure out what zero to the i would be if it were defined. Problem is, it doesn't take too much to show that this limit does not exist. If we approach from two different directions, we're getting two different results. Hence, this limit does not exist and doesn't get us any closer to an answer. But it does give us some insight into why this might not exist. The real issue here is the phase, the angle of this supposed number. In our equation, the angle, the phase, is the natural log of zero. And there just isn't one angle here that would make sense. But there is a glimmer of hope that we can draw from this to give us a cool result. The modulus, or the absolute value, is the distance from the origin. And I think this has a fairly sensible definition, since any complex number z can be written in its polar form, r e to the i theta, where r is its modulus, its absolute value, the distance from the origin, and theta being its phase. And we already concluded that x to the i is the same as e to the i ln x. Or taking their absolute values, I can just stick a 1 in there, and regardless of the angle, regardless of the phase, the modulus is 1. Again, we do have some uniqueness concerns when looking at the complex logarithm, and I'm not entirely sure it makes sense to define a modulus for numbers that don't even exist, but I do think that this is a sensible definition for the modulus of 0 to the i. It's almost like 0 to the i lives one unit from the origin, and it can't decide where it wants to make its permanent residence. There's just not a phase that makes sense. 